Mike Chick, one, two, one, two. What's shaking, everybody? Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, Disjointed Food Biz. Uh, I'm Dave Germain. Uh, with me, as always, Thor Markey. Hey, what's shaking, everybody? Uh, this is a podcast, as opposed to the other podcasts that I do. Uh, this one is about uh, the food service industry, an industry that I have been working in, uh, uh, in and out, almost every position for the past, a little over 20 years. And uh, sitting next to me is a guy who has actually worked every position. Just uh, about. Just about. Uh, the only thing I think I've never, uh, I, w- I was kind of wanted to aspire to, to wonder if, just to see if I could do it would be regional. Yeah. Because I like yeah. managing like seagulls, which means I like to fly in and shit all over everything and then fly <laughs> right back out of it again. Uh, by the way, this this uh, this show is meant for folks who work in not just front of house or back of house, but also for the managers as well. Uh, talking about the industry as a whole, this isn't necessarily supposed to be about Hey, let's shit on everything. Yeah. You know, owners, operators. Yeah, exactly. We like all kinds of uh, different topics. Absolutely. You know what was kind of nice is that we had. Uh, yeah, see, that's why I knew uh, it was going to go away. Because <laughs> I'm like, there's no way in hell we got 22 people watching right now. Nice. Um, one of the things that was really interesting um, that I, I found a, a group on Facebook about restaurant owners and operators and stuff, and it was being nice, kind of chat with other folks and stuff, and. Um, I'm starting to I get the impression that not necessarily everybody on there has had an insane amount of years of uh, of restaurant experience. Yeah. You know, which isn't necessarily a horrible thing. You're not doomed or anything like that, but there's a, uh, it's a whole new world. Like, I'm guessing maybe some folks were bartenders forever and they finally got the money or somehow were able to get, like, a restaurant. And then suddenly they're like, holy shit, how do I manage? How do I do this? How do I do that? You know. Or they got degrees in the in the field and went right into a regional setup or whatever else. And I can tell you, I love culinary degrees. Oh my gosh, people! No, it's all bad. <laughs> Don't do it. Uh, now nah, the only reason I say that and stuff, and I'm sure somebody's like, "Hey, I graduated from Le Cordon Bleu, you son of a fat bastard." No, you're right, and that is a very that's a prestigious thing uh, to do. It's just that I have chased out many, many uh, culinary graduates out of a lot of the restaurants that I've managed. Uh, years ago because they're, they they talk the talk, but they get weeded out on three tickets, which means that they're taking up good air that, that I could have been breathing. Uh, but, um, yeah, so either way, I'm oh, kind of I biased. Mean, but not, not only that, you think 15, 20 years ago, you know, there might have been four schools nationwide. Right. Now all of a sudden there's a school in every region. So mm-hmm. what do they actually know? Where are they getting these people? Are they really – putting in 15 years on the line or yeah. running their own restaurants. You know Probably what it reminds not. me of? Oh, you know, remember back, these were big back in the 80s and 90s, especially after the Tom Cruise movie Cocktail came out. <laughs> Bartending <laughs> school. Bartending school, yes. Oh, my gosh. No, no, now, now those have a little bit of merit. You do get the recipes. Yeah. That uh, you can <laughs> buy in the store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I'm glad I went to, uh, I'm glad I, I, I <laughs> I'm really glad I went to that bartending school. Hold on for a second. Hey, Siri, how do I make a margarita? (laughs) That didn't take me nine weeks and five grand. That's that's exactly what I did. (laughs) Some of them are ten grand. I mean, come on. I know. Dude, there was, uh, and I think what it would come down to really is that, and I knew uh, when I worked years and years ago, I worked in Embassy Suites, um, the, the comp bar, uh, tender, oh, I, f- I think, I think her name was Samantha. I can't remember. Good name. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I hear you like that name a lot. Yeah. I like him. that name. Uh, that she was also an instructor at the bartending academy across the street. Okay. Hotels would hire from bartending academies because like, Hey, they already know the stuff. It says they should be proficient and they didn't have to deal with an experienced bartender giving him shit about how everything is messed up and how it's run in that place. Or how it's slow. Yes, exactly. That yes. too. Because it's feast or famine at hotels. But uh, she was like, they accepted a guy who was blind. I'm like, like blind in one eye? And she's like, no, like seeing eye dog with a cane, blind. Dude, if you're out there, I want the video from yeah. that. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's kind of me, but I just think like he's the coolest dude ever and stuff. But he's doing all this flair, but he's just tossing bottles, but nobody wants to tell him, so they just keep taking new bottles and putting it in his hand. And like, yeah, man, that was great. Well, <laughs> like, how, how do you count the liquor coming out? You don't know if it's porn. I yeah, exactly. You hear it. Well, you could right. do that. You could feel like if it's like you know one, two, Wait, three. He's putting his finger in the spout every time. I mean, <laughs> come just, on. 
<laughs> somebody goes around and messes up all the bottles and stuff. Like, uh, I asked for a Long Island, and this is clearly a cafe mocha. <laughs> so, like, uh, so when the servers need change, if he's these- <laughs> Kind dude, of a jerk about so much, it. Oh, that'd be fun. Dude, they let's, make so much money the there. Let's vodka with the tuaka. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> oh. But every t- but the thing is, is uh, they were like, how do you is it that you actually, like, we're asking, like, how, could you, how can they justify that and stuff? Because he's not, what restaurant is going to be able to, uh, to is going to hire him? Well, and, you know, there, there, there is a couple bartending schools out there that have been around for a while. And they do teach you great things, you know, um, for uh, uh, competition bartending and stuff like that. They'll oh, yeah. teach you garnishes, whatever else. And like everything else out there, it's a stolen art. But, you know, like CIA or Johnson & Wales or Le Cordon Bleu, mm-hmm. they are just as prestiged. Um, but majority of your regular sets of bartending school is some guy that, you know, ran Timmy's down on the corner for his 20 years. His name is Tad years. or Skip. A skip. Skip yeah. works. Um, that decided he could make a couple extra money because his bar went under or vice versa. So, you know, it's it's never a good thing. But, hey, employers like to see that paper. Yep, he has a three gram a day uh, Coke habit. Uh, <laughs> let's see. There's a, lot, there's a lot of teenagers that get accepted into that school because the guy's a creep. Uh, I'm going to try to adjust the camera here just a smidge. You know, it's the same thing with cooking schools or stuff like that. And it's just like regular college, all right? With, with, with anything out there, you can be book smart, but you don't know how to apply that. And in restaurant industries or industries that are moving fast pace, so like take doctors. Right. If you have a doctor that is completely book smart, but isn't the quickest sewer or cutter or whatever else. You're not going to see him in the ER doing surgery. He's going to do research. Right. You know, but there is, there is none of that for, um, restaurants. You know, you could be the, the smartest book guy out there, but like you said, you can't handle three tickets Mm -hmm. or, or, you know, your marketing schemes aren't running right because you don't know how the feedback's coming or how to judge your, your area whether it's, you know, blue collar, white collar, whatever else, which is, you know, almost abolished nowadays. You're either um, poor, Mm -hmm. poor, poor, or rich. Yeah, or you think that you're rich, but you're really poor. (laughs) Yo, dude, I make all this money, dude. I make $2,000 a week. Yeah, that's cool. How many hours you work? Oh, I work about 120 hours a week. Really? Hey, that's interesting, man. You know, uh, that's you're not, I mean, you're doing... You got a lot of cash, but I don't, I don't know what you're going to do. You're just shaving years off of that existence. Well, that's the Coke habit. Yeah, exactly. There well, you go. Hey, I need more Coke <laughs> so I can do more work, so I can feel better, so I can do more Coke, like, so I can make more money. Uh, I still remember that <laughs> that commercial. Uh, man, you know, we should probably share this and so, so folks know what we're doing. Oh, wait, is that a... We got a chimer? Possibly. We might have got an auto host or something here from uh, Vince. Good old DM here. Oh, wait a second. I shouldn't broadcast it. It's a rebroadcast. Let's do this. All right. Well, while he's playing with the computer, if you guys have any topics after you've watched this, uh, let us know. You know, give us something new to talk about. You know, a lot of times we've been, we've been, uh, the, the last episode we went over, um, the online apps, the, the food speeds and, um, door dashes and Uber oh, yeah. eats and stuff like that. Um, you know, but one of the problems that we were talking about earlier this week was, um, employees hiring mm-hmm. things, things of that nature, you know, um, and it goes from the top to the bottom, you know. It, I'm a firm and strong believer. You take care of your 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 workers, and they'll take care of you. Um, but if you're hiring people that are book smart and can't apply these things, and can't really work uh, the restaurants or the hotels or or actually work the job, they just kind of point and hey, you go do this, you go do that. That's not really what's needed in this business. That's a boss. That's not a leader. Well, yeah, right? you know, this oh. isn't a desk job. 
right. even even as a manager, you know, yeah, you got a lot of things going on. You got figure eights and employee issues, whatever else. But you you shouldn't be behind the desk for more than a day out of every month. Yeah. Well, that's that was something that was uh, very painful uh, for me to realize when I, my first management job because I thought, okay, I'm not going to be working the line anymore. I'm not going to be on the <laughs> register. Yeah, now I'm working every fucking position is what I'm doing. And uh, I resisted that, I would say, the first year uh, oh, sure. until I finally kind of learned how to embrace it, you know, and be like, okay, I got to. Uh, I'm I'm the lazy guy here at this place. That was a Peter Piper. I was the shitty manager on yep. the team, you know, and which is weird. I got blamed for a lot of stuff, but I never got. I mean, there was there was a lot of stupid. Uh, you know, it was funny. My my boss at the time he made it a point. He kept me in a on a on a in a specific pen where Dave, you're going to do this, you're going to do this, but you're not doing anything else. I'm not going to have you do inventory. I'm not going to have you do this. Maybe occasionally I'll have you do the Coca-Cola order and stuff, but you're not going to do any ordering. Maybe some inventory every now and then. Sure. Which, but he would give those odd projects to like shift leads and stuff. Who obviously they've been working for the company for a lot longer than I have. But uh, it took me a while to kind of figure out like, okay, I'm going to have to just start learning this shit on my own because nobody was going to teach me. And yeah, the only thing that I did there was two things. Uh, well, one thing that I did really well there was. Uh, the way that Peter Piper's labor worked out is that if you could sell one, um, like, there's birthday reservations, right? Because those are really big on the weekends. Sure. So there's two, t- there's three tiers. There's just reserving a table, and then there's a party pack, which, you know, like, so many pizzas for so many kids, and they're going to get a small amount of tokens. Or you could spend 20 bucks per kid, and we're going to give you uh, way more tokens and stuff, more pizza, plus a dessert, and all this other stuff, right? Well, every even if you sell the mid grade, to uh, you get an extra two hours on your labor. Sure. Right. So a lot of times when they hit labor, it wasn't because how they were running the restaurant during the week. It's because of it all the, the birthday part. Yeah, all the parties that I sold on the weekend. Right. That then I'm like, you know, I understand that you guys have an extra thirty hours of labor this week, right? Because of sales that I made, not what you made. I'm like, well, it's not important. All right. Well, fair enough then. But. Um, but no, here's a question I wanted to ask before I went on my Peter Piper tirade. So you hire some, but let's say I hire somebody that they've got the book smart and everything. And, um, it's been two weeks now and I'm starting to see th- kind of what you're talking about. I've seen them delegate stuff, but I haven't actually seen them do anything yet. So, uh, what would be my first step you think? And this is obviously talking about somebody in a management position. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter if it's a manager or or a line level employee. You know, you got to coach. Mm-hmm. You got to train. Coach and train. Right. Coach and train. Coach and train. And if they're still not getting it, then uh, it's time to cut ties. Right. I mean, you're you got ninety days, right? Well, normally, it depends on the state and stuff too. I mean, your investment, your time, and your energy is in there. Um, they should know everything within, you know, a month of being there. They should know the recipes. They should know how things work. Now, they might not be up on the P&Ls or the inventories or stuff like that, but they sh- within the first month, they should know the restaurant inside and out. Right. All right. Um, and it doesn't matter, you know, like I said, if it's a manager or line-level employee, um, if I have a server that's never served before, I'm going to give them a little more time, a little more leeway. Right. But I'm also going to coach them. Hey, try this. Hey, see how you're doing this? Let's organize this way. Let's let's look at this from a different angle. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people come from uh, a desk job or something. They're only looking part-time, right. whatever. They don't understand the business fully. And for a line level, it's going to take even longer. For a manager... If you've been in this business, even for a year with another company, you should know a basic operation of a restaurant. Right. And that transfers, and yes, they say, oh, every business is different. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. But there's some aspects that every restaurant is the same. Right. The food still comes out, cooked by a cook, piping hot, served by a server. You still have tables, chairs, and walls. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, there's basics to this business that should be applied and known by everybody, Mm -hmm. you know, but again, if you get a manager that manages a situation and then the situation falls apart, 
will that manager jump into that situation to fix it mm -hmm. or will they try to manage a situation that's not manageable? Yeah, that's really weird when you see somebody like they're, uh, it's almost the equivalent of uh, a manager flipping out over consumable costs. Yeah. Right? Which those are important to try to, uh, to minimize as much as possible. For those of you who don't know, consumables is like uh, ketchup packets, napkins, salt packets, right? Those are things that you don't actually sell. Those are part of the things that you, uh, that you use in order you know, to sell the rest of your food. So you don't make money off of those. So you're basically trying not to hemorrhage cash on it. But I've seen, I've had bosses that will flip out. Like, how many napkins are you putting in there? Well, it should only and, be two and a half. I'm and like, there's a difference in that, too. Right. Your consumables, if you get something to go um, or the price of your menu, mm -hmm. you should price your menu out to as if it was to go, mm -hmm. regardless if they're eaten here or not. Because you price those consumables into the bag mm -hmm. you know so to speak the bag itself the forks salt peppers the you know that should all be priced in there so you should actually maybe not making a whole lot off of it maybe mm -hmm. maybe it's only a penny but you should be making something off of it it yeah, shouldn't so just be given it. away for free and that's where um companies like mcdonald's mm -hmm. burger king whatever else you go hey can i get an extra for a while there they'd be like 50 cents a quarter right. or whatever else <laughs> Um, but you can't. Did you want yourself? Did you want an extra barbecue? Let's go to Costco. Yeah. You can't nickel and dime your customers. Yeah, they get pissed. Dude, there's so many. get upset. I've had people like that flip out about it. You would think that McDonald's was, was asking them to renounce Jesus Christ. <laughs> and they're like, how dare you? Yeah. You know, yeah. but uh, but the, I guess uh, uh, to bring it back to what you you were talking about, is it, uh, I was using the consumables as an example, but. Uh, a manager who is flipping out over using four packets instead of three. Right. Yes. But the thing is, the entire time, uh, he can't keep anybody uh, in their back of house because the, the, he keeps having cooks quit. Right. Or the table of the restaurant, the, the house always looks dirty because he can't get a server to bu uh, pre bus or bust their own tables. Sure. But he's going to try to flip out over something. I'm like, hey, man, on the list of shit that's really important right now. <laughs> you're at the bottom of the total. You're at the bottom of you're you're focusing on like And most managers that are like that as well are sit down and point and point and go. Yeah. All right. Although they don't do the go. Right. Um like I said, I'm a firm believer in taking care of your people. Uh I, I'll work right beside somebody. I don't care if it's cleaning the bathroom, busting the table, mm -hmm. cooking online. And the staff well, the new the 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 staff that you have will actually, the ones that have pride in what they do, mm -hmm. will actually ride with you. Oh, yeah, totally. Now, the ones that don't care, don't give a damn, they're not going to care or give a damn anyway. Right. There's but they'll you... still respect you more because you're working besides them, which yeah. means you can get a, a, that, that hair bit more out of them. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's contagious, too. That's it what is. I always found that, too. Even the guy who doesn't who's the lazy ass on the floor and stuff, but I'm like, oh, this, uh, once again, this is a good lesson I learned at Peter Piper. Because it's all teenagers that work there, or as I like to call barely legal child labor. Uh, <laughs> the, um, well, the When it comes to cleaning the bathrooms at the end of the night, right, which people do horrible shit to public restrooms, but the grossest ones is always the girls' bathroom instead of the guys'. You would think it would yeah, be the no, guys. Yeah, no, that's that's yeah. Almost so, everywhere I've worked, it's been ladies' oh, bathrooms. Oh yeah. So when they have to clean out what we call the prize boxes, uh, <laughs> there was a, there was like one this new guy. He's like, I cannot do it, and he would just kind of flip out. No, you can't make me. And I'm like, fine then, give me the mop, you know. And he's yep. like, well, I could do it. Like, no, 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 it's okay. I got this, man. Like I had to show him. Like, listen, dude, I'm not above. Cleaning out some nasty, like apparently not every gal knows how to uh, manage the uh, the little napkins, the sanitary things wow. as well as they should be, right? And we're we're gonna get roasted because we're dudes. Yeah. Saying hey, listen, I'm the one who had to clean it up. I think I've got, <laughs> I've got, and you know, I was I was born from a woman, so therefore I think I should. Have, I'm well, like two percent. No, <laughs> I had the twenty three and me done, so I think that I'm a little bit qualified. No, but the whole thing was is that, like, I had to do that once. And then the next time it's stuff, he was like, no, nah, it's okay. I got it, man. Well, yeah, like, yeah. I, I, I've had similar experiences, and I've always, and it could be females as well, but yeah. I've always told them, you know, what are you going to do when 
you get in a relationship or you have a wife and mm -hmm. kids and who do you think's going to pick this stuff up? Yeah, exactly. You it's, know, eventually it's going to be you. It's like, I hate to tell you this, bro. You can't ask your wife to take out the trash all the time. Like yeah. maybe 40 years ago, you could get away with that shit. 1930s, you were good. No, now, no it's 2017, yeah, son. Majority of the women out there are yeah. going to tell you where to go and how to get there. Yeah, exactly. So, but that's the idea. But you actually kind of talked about, you mentioned this many times. So as far as like uh, coaching, you know, training, like coaching, coaching, coaching. When it comes to, I can't speak for back because I've only spent like when I was at the airport, I trained uh, some of a few of the cooks back there, and it was a limit, small menu, so it's nothing compared to like you know, bigger restaurants and stuff goes. But um, when it comes to front of house, it was basically uh, the traditional way of training is here's the menu, can you memorize the menu, can you kind of stumble your way through putting an order in? Great. Right. Can you be here tomorrow? Uh, that's basically that's, that's that's a big thing. And that was the training where you just kind of get thrown to the wolves and stuff. And either you sink or swim. And that's at that time, there was always so many applicants coming in. Yes, that you could do that. You didn't have to spend that much time the training. But uh, companies like Starbucks, when they uh, when they really started to hit it big back in the nineties, they put an insane amount of of training into every one of the baristas. And uh, um, training, training is key and important, mm -hmm. you know, and a, a lot of the bigger companies will lose out on training because the managers aren't completely trained or they don't understand how to train mm -hmm. or they have so much to do mm -hmm. that they don't have time to train. Yeah, you know, I found out that I can cut a good 20 hours of labor out of uh, uh, labor right. this week if I just have the manager work the register or have the manager do the cooking. So I only, I send, uh, we send the cooks During home at... the slow time. Yeah, from 2 o'clock to 5. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, you know, when all the prep needs to get done, <laughs> all the other stuff, you know. Well, and then, you know, hey, you got a new person, you got to train too. Oh, wait, you're doing the back of the house, but they need to train in the front of the house. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, 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 <laughs> it's a lost art. I'm going to put uh, my, the responsibility of training on this server who is not going to get compensated. I'll throw a burger at him. And they're but, two weeks old. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Best of luck on that. And then like, hey, how come the service is going down? Well, you, I always say, I've said this before on other shows and stuff, is that uh, something given away has no value. <laughs> yeah. And when it comes to training, if your server, if your, your trainers are willing to train for free, then they're not really doing the best job as possible. I know this because I don't always do the I never did the best job as I possibly could have unless I had a personal stake in it. So uh, not, of course, not the restaurant that I work at now, but uh, sure. The, but no, but like uh, when it came to uh, like uh, previous restaurants like Macaroni Grill or Pizzeria Uno or other places that I've worked at, um, I trained them enough for them not to be a hassle to me and not to ruin the floor. Well, right. That's about as far as I went. As far as like company ethics guidelines and stuff, I'm like, you know. But right, but but as okay, so and I see both sides because right. I've been there. Right. You know, if there's nothing, if if I'm not getting extra money or, you know, uh, a prime rib dinner, then well, what the heck am I doing this for? Um, but same token, you get extra hands, you get to relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but. As a trainer, as a trainer, I've done a lot of training throughout the years. Mm -hmm. But even as an employee, you think, "All right, well, this person's going to be working with me." And you're right; I don't want them to be a hassle, but I also want them to support me. Yeah, well, you want them to do well and be a good team player. So instead of having the mentality of, "All right, if I can get them through to just do barely enough not to piss me off on a busy <laughs> shift, then I'm doing good." Right. You know. Um, but you know, e even as if you have any stakes in any company or you've been there, you know, for five, six years, you have stakes, whether oh, yeah. you want to admit it or not. So you, sh you should always push. So you have that job security because let's face it in restaurants, the job security is, is day to day. Mm -hmm. Well, the, uh, that's true. Well, I guess I, I think I'm, I don't, I, I misspoke or I didn't clarify, um, I did take uh, pride in my training because I wanted the team to work really well. I guess the part that I took exception to and the why I bring up money 
was because when like uh, the higher ups would be like, "Hey, we really appreciate all the work that you're doing. You're an integral part of the success of this company." Yeah. You do that, and we're like, really? Because why are you lying to me? Because Man, if any of that time. was, yeah, if any of that was true, then you would show me that. Hey, listen, we're throwing. It, I'm, you know, I don't even want to put a number on it. Just show the fact that hey, we know that this means a lot. This means a lot to us. Oh sure. So we want it to mean a lot to you and. Uh, there's somebody way up there that I'm never going to see who's like, well, why are we paying extra money for a trainer? I mean, they were going to be working there anyways, right? right? That's more money that can go to our bottom line. That's and, well, smart business, isn't investors it? investors and the CEOs yeah, and Exactly. So, uh, oh, there's something I want to ask. Uh, this is, it's going to be, a st- I got a stupid idea coming up later, so I'll just warn you guys now. Uh-oh. So, uh, but we'll get to that in a moment. So that was, as far as like training, obviously, is a super big aspect of it. It starts with the managers. If the manager, I found this out through my own experience. If I didn't learn the register within the first three days at any re- restaurant that I managed, or if I didn't learn the table numbers, or if I didn't learn anything about there within the first week or so, really, then chances are I was going to have a hard time learning it. Like, yes. strangely, this is stupid. I, and I spent many, many hours in the bar, and it wasn't even that big of a place back in the airport in Phoenix Sky Harbor. Uh, I never learned the table numbers. So, in this, how do you so, deliver your? Oh, let's see. This uh, this is Regan's table. Let's see. It's two dishes. I look over there. Hey, Regan, your food's up. And uh, <laughs> oh, where is it? Over there. Okay, I know where fourteen is. I'll go over there. Hey, you know, and I just kind of call things out. I'm like, all right, they only have two tables in their section right now. One of them already has food, so I'm guessing this one. And it was. I felt so stupid yeah. and so embarrassed. By it, I mean, I eventually I got the basics of it, but sure. when it came to like the outside patio, for some reason I just it just didn't compute. Um, so if we don't have if you don't have if the manager's not that uh, doesn't know their shit more and doesn't care to know their shit, chances are it's going to filter on down. So that's how that's obviously that's a great way to to look at things from a couple of years ago, but in the past year and a half though. There are new challenges that have coming up with, and by the way, I don't have any answers for the stuff that I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, finding employees now or quality employees. Uh, finding employees, period. Yeah. And I don't think it's any one section. It mm. appears nationwide. You know, and they got all these, the government comes out, oh, lowest unemployment rate ever. Yeah, because they're, they're all driving for Uber, idiot. <laughs> they're all independent <laughs> contractors. Exactly. Now, I mean, that's 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 some of it, too. I mean, um, but there's, you know, you have so much um, online, Twitch, YouTube. I mean, mm-hmm. they're making money that way, you know, uh, working for themselves, doing uh, podcasts, whatever right. else. There's so many people out there doing it, you know, and and trying to find people that actually have pride in something that they're doing, that isn't for them yeah. uh, seems to be changing. Uh, I don't care if you're a mechanic, you're working for somebody else. You really don't care. That's why, you know, half the time the oil filters aren't tight or right. they left a rag in your engine. You know, I mean, nobody seems to care about what they're doing no- anymore. And it doesn't matter if it's sweeping or cleaning windows, whatever else. So, trying to find somebody to come into your business and I'm speaking from a a, a, a smaller business <coughs> you know the corporations as well um, you know they're trying to make money but I mean let's face it in restaurants we should get away from the corporate thing yeah. we should go back to the independent operators you know but to try and find somebody that actually cares about what you're doing your product your building, your service, your customers, your people nowadays is hard, man. Yeah, and I think one of the uh, there's there's many different reasons for that, and the idea of well, gosh, man, there was this great uh, it was in the movie Office Space where like uh, basically when uh, was it Ron Livingston says like I basically find that every week at um, you, I get paid just enough so that way I don't quit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know what that means? That means that I work hard enough just to barely not get fired. Right. So, and there's a good thing. And by the way, quality of life, from what, from what I understand, is a great punchline uh, for when it comes to <laughs> uh, uh, trying to figure out salaries and stuff for managers. Mm. So this is pretty weird. This is my thought on this. And I am not, I don't own a restaurant. Uh 
so you can tell me to fuck off all you want. But if I'm trying to save money on the manager, the person who's going to be responsible for the business when I'm not there, and I try to pay them as little as possible, I shouldn't be surprised when shit starts going downhill. Absolutely not. But somehow, uh, there always seems to be like this shock and amazement. I can't believe... That he would do such a thing. I'm like, well, you had the guy working 55 to 60 hours a week for 38K, right? Or 40, yeah. Yeah, and you kept yanking the bonus every three months that you were dangling in front of him. Well, and you live in an area where you're paying two grand for for apartment or gas, whatever. You know, majority of it's coming up and expensive. And majority of the restaurant people... Mm -hmm. Uh, can't afford to to live in the areas that some of these restaurants are in or majority of these areas that yeah. the restaurants are in, you know. But for a business person, you're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. I'm skimming this guy. I'm paying him 30. He's running a million-dollar business. Mm-hmm. And What an idiot. What a moron. If he was smarter, he would have been able to get more money out of it. Well, right? You know, you're missing... Five hundred dollars in inventory. Yeah, hey, right, where did that go? And I'm gonna hold him responsible. Hey, how come I keep getting these uh, calls from uh, the police department saying that we're constantly selling uh, booze <laughs> to uh, underage kids? And I'm like, right? Uh, because rich kids will pay out the ass for liquor. That's why. Right. And uh, but they they didn't save. They're not saving the money. I mean, on the when it comes to the ones and zeros, and as long as you don't have to go in that unit. Yeah, it seems like you're saving money until you actually go in there and you're like, wait a second. Well, and you know? and and some 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 of the types of businesses you're talking about now, you know, uh, whether it's hotels or restaurants, people are putting together these management groups. Mm. So you pay them; they take care of the rest of it for you. Right. You don't even have to know the business, work the business, or really care about the business. All you're doing is taking the profit from it. So. Which seems like a decent idea because you're basically just an investor. You're not an owner at that point, right? Well, right. But if you're going to own something, like, okay, if I'm going to buy a car, mm-hmm. I'm going to, okay, maybe maybe I'll take it to the car wash and have them clean it. Mm-hmm. But when I see a scratch, they're not going to repair it. Right. You know, if I buy an, and, and you know, if I'm going to use cars, but if I buy, like, a 72 Corvette mint condition, mm-hmm. I'm not letting anybody touch that damn thing. Right. I'm going to take care of it. Why? Because it's mine. I paid for it. So if you're a business owner and you want nothing to do with the business, restaurants are not the way to go. So it's not the easy money that people think that it's going to be. No. That's, that's the part like that I feel really bad. I, I mentioned this on a previous podcast, but I remember this is when I was, uh, was waiting tables a couple of years ago, and there was this family that was coming in, and they were asking me some questions about well, how are things going? How do you do with sales and stuff? And, you know, I talked to them a little bit because I manage restaurants. And I'm like, well, we're uh, we're moving. I'm like, oh, you guys moving out of town? They're like, yeah, we're heading up to Wyoming. We get we just bought a restaurant. And I'm like, cool. Have you done it before? And they're like, uh, no, but it seems like it's a small little mom and pop place. I think we should be. I think we're going to be great. It's a new adventure. And right. I'm like, well, man, I wish you the best, man. I think you're going to do great. Just watch your inventory. You know, there's a book, uh, The One Minute Manager is a great one to read. You know, try well, to that's get. more leadership, you know, which I think is something that's lacking in a La- lot of leadership's lacking huge, mm-hmm. you know, but on the same token, you know, as far as the employees go and stuff, you know, you got all these college kids coming out with these degrees. Mm-hmm. They spent, you know, 40, 50, 60, 80,000 dollars for these degrees mm-hmm. and they're expecting right off the bat mm-hmm. to get a job paying 140 a year. Yeah. Uh, which some people can do that. I've seen some people, uh, Hey, I just got it, uh, hired on in this law firm. I'm like, okay. Well, sure, but you still have to do the footwork. You yeah. still have to, you know, and law firms, let's face it, you're their bitch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a reason why I've met so many angry lawyers and stuff, man, because they're like, oh, no, you've been getting punched in the dick every You know, day. but, like, say, say you go for a journalism degree. You get out of college. You just paid all this money. You basically went to school to trained to be an editor or writer or whatever else, and you can't even get in the front door of writing an article in a newspaper or on a website. They're right. like, well, no, let's get you working some of the paper routes or yeah, something Yeah, exactly. Like that. Here's a mail room and here's right. a plunger. Uh, <laughs> what? Time to put in your dues. Yeah, exactly. You know, nobody wants to put in their dues anymore. So um, same thing with, you know, uh, 
people buying restaurants and moving to Wyoming. Mm -hmm. They don't know what it takes to put in their dues. Yeah, they don't know. Listen, I'll tell you right now, your cook is probably seriously on crystal meth. Yeah. All right. You know, (laughs) there's a reason. The owner of the previous owner thought it would be easier just to sell it than to try to fire this dickhead. So. (laughs) And I've seen franchisees come into the business, you know, uh, in their retirement, they invest everything into the restaurant. Uh, And they were a post office worker for 20 something years. Yeah. You know, but restaurant business. You know, there are people that have 40 years in this business that fail. Mm -hmm. And these guys think they're coming into something easy and, oh, well, we'll make a bunch of money and be able to relax and go on vacations. And it doesn't work out that way. you got to work it, you know. It takes a couple years, especially for franchisees. And you shouldn't always look into one sole place. If you can corner a market, whatever else, that's great. But you still have to look in because again nobody's going to watch your investment like you yeah that's absolutely true man and um so yeah i don't know about that i'd have to look into some of those management companies and be like all right what have you actually done besides fuck shit up like as well right how many sexual assault cases have you had to settle out of court through arbitration and the contract that you made all the new hires sign like you know how many of those Uh, because i don't know that's But uh, I'm just being silly, guys. Well, and with the management group, especially for hotels, you get these guys in there that can run three or four properties. Everything looks great. Mm -hmm. Everything's in the black. And then they start expanding. They're selling these franchises, and they're picking them up. And before they know it, they have 200 companies. And like any other business out there, whether you're starting a shirt business, whatever else, you've grown so much that you don't know how to handle and you don't know – how to adjust for this business. Oh, totally. You know? Um, well, there's a th- big thing. There was a thing called the, the, the diffusal of responsibility. And I would add just awareness in general to this. Like, uh, for I'll just explain it. So if anybody who doesn't know. Uh, so if somebody was being uh, brutally attacked in this room right now, in this kitchen, right, would we try to help them? More than likely, yes, we would. Right, no. unless we really hate, it. unless it's front of house, and I kept telling them. Like, Everybody friggin- pulls out their no phones. Sp- <laughs> Video this world what star. <laughs> now, let's say if that person, if somebody's getting brutally attacked, uh, like a girl's getting assaulted outside of the restaurant. If we hear it, yes, absolutely, we're going to go out there and try to help. Okay, what if it's at the far end of the parking lot? We might not hear it. Might not. What if it's a mile down the road? What if it's on the other side of town? Sure. So the farther the issue actually gets away from you, the less responsibility the people tend to uh, to feel for it. So when these companies expand so much, and this is why I think it's really easy just for me personally uh, to hate uh, the corporate office so much because I'm very far away from them, and they're very far away from me. And so I'm having the worst ideas of thinking that like when a stupid bonehead decision comes down, and then I'm like, is this person just justifying their job? Maybe they have a really good reason for it, but there's too much of a distance. And I think uh, we talked about this once. I, w- I was off mic that companies, once they expand por- uh, towards us, there's like a breaking point where suddenly their quality and everything that made them special just starts. To is boom. gone. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I, I don't know if there's there is something to be said about regional kind of restaurants. It's something like I don't know as much as I miss White Castle. I don't know if I would appreciate it as much if they were everywhere. As much as I love In N Out Burger, uh, yeah, no, definitely. There's a reason why they stay in the the specific areas that they're in because, uh, I mean, it's not like they couldn't expand. I think most of those places make money. I think they choose not to. Well, yeah. sure, and I think it was the old man for uh, In N Out Burger mm-hmm. before he stepped down and the the kids took over. That's when they start expanding, mm-hmm. you know, but. Um, some companies keep it small and they make, you know, adequate money and they make great money, Mm -hmm. but you know, everybody's money, money hungry. So let's expand, let's grow, let's make even more money, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and restaurants alone, restaurants have always been unique. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a reason why you can't find Olive Garden or, or, you know, big corporate chained restaurants in certain places, like say Manhattan, right? They're starting to get in there now, but for years they you, there's no never, way they no get, way they couldn't compete. The, you know, Dunkin' Donuts was your biggest chain that ran in that city. Yeah, you know, and but, there's still only a couple of them. 
Right. But restaurants have always been unique. And I, and if there are any chefs out there, you know, most chefs are, are a little bit arrogant, but their food is <laughs> unique to them. Right, right. That's why that style of food and service, like we talked about before in the States, is dead because nobody wants unique. Everybody wants what they know. Mm-hmm. And uh, the cheers theory is a great thing. But when it comes to food, you know, it shouldn't be a cheers theory. Right. I mean, yeah, if you have a certain Mexican place, whatever else, but, you know, it's all Americanized, I guess, to a fold. But, you know, we're we're never going to grow. I mean, you know, all these places out there, you know, the average Joe goes to, your corporate chains, um, and an out Burgers, you know, Olive Gardens, Longhorns, um you know, Applebee's, whatever else, the the chef doesn't know where that store is, Mm -hmm. never seen that store. They sit in a kitchen, majority of them, Mm -hmm. in a test kitchen, never having a a real restaurant to work in, never really seeing, you know, everything, but... but Hardly an Adderall. Yeah, but the, the, the clientele, the guest comes in thinking, oh, there's a chef back there. No, man, it's... It's a 20-year-old kid flipping whatever you you ordered. Yeah, he'll work for much cheaper. You know? Yeah. Um, there's no personality to it. There's no personal touches. There's no, you know, when was the last time you went to a restaurant where the chef came out and talked to you that didn't cost you over 100 bucks? Yeah, that's true. You know? Um, you know, I went to one restaurant, took my wife out, a week kind of eat, you know, decent. I'm in the business. I like trying different places. Right. You know, for the two of us, with two drinks and our meal, it was four hundred dollars. Wow! You know, in a place like that, I expect the chef to come out. But yeah. again, it was a chain. Ugh. And yes, they had cooks, and they have a guy in there that's titled chef. But as a chain, the main chef is sitting at a test kitchen. Mm-hmm. So what am I really getting? An alcoholic. His idea. Yeah. Now, yeah, right. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, they're the big boys out there that everybody sees on TV, Wolfgang, Emeril, you know, Gordon, they actually hire chefs to, to be in their restaurants, but they go to their restaurants. Right. You know, um, they don't just let them be. They don't touch them or let somebody else run it for them and just look at numbers. Right. You know, they actually still visit and cook and move and... You know, but there's a there's a lost lost in that, you know, with the corporations doing it the way they are. Yeah. Well, the um, the other thing I was going to mention up this is the stupid idea that or the the big issue oh. we were ta- uh, that I wanted to talk about when it comes to uh, staffing and stuff. I keep hearing through some of the the Facebook groups that were that uh, that you and I are on where they talk about the restaurant industry. And which there's a lot of really cool people on there, but when I keep hearing seeing the phrase "adapt or die," especially when it comes to talking oh, about yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like the um, the the ordering apps and stuff, uh, I don't think that we made a, a clear enough. Uh, I don't think I made a clear enough point, or if we made a clear, I'll just take the blame on this one. Ordering apps are great, but that initial up t- uptick that you have in takeout orders will eventually start to tra- uh, transition to the folks who used to come into your restaurant are now ordering from home. And oh, so, sure. so most of the folks that answered on the, the question, I'm like, what's your guys' experience of that? Some people really like it. Some people didn't. Everybody can agree that they don't want to give up 30%, but they f- consider it a necessary evil. But most of the folks who said that they were really in up on it, I'm, I got the feeling they had been doing it for less than six months. Sure. You know what sure. I mean? So I'm like, I, I definitely like to see a company that's been doing it for, you know, the whole time. Because it's only been, what, year, year and a half yeah, since a all these came out. But, I mean, think about the product, too. They're steaming in these things. There's no way they're getting the same product that should be Absolutely. on the plate. But we had there were some really good ideas. I wish I could. I, wish, I should have brought it up uh, by then. But it was a gentleman who was talking about how he decided not to do the apps. He was going to buy a car that he needed for the restaurant anyways and just have his own delivery and a five mile radius, not trying to be greedy, not trying to sell it to the entire city that he lives in. It's like five miles. There's plenty of houses. I can sure. make money off of that. And then he would also put in like uh, uh in-house coupon. So they had to come into the restaurant if they wanted to get and that. And that's a fabulous that idea. Was a great idea. Um, and 
that's because you're getting them on delivery and then you could also get them to come in and i mean i think getting if, a little marketing and free advertising because mm-hmm. you're not you're not really well i mean you are paying the the driver but you're not really paying the driver um and keeping it in your own company like i said before you know i'm surprised somebody hasn't dropped you know a little g in a bag and whatever else down the road but mm-hmm. and you never know who's delivering your food yeah, that's true, man. And uh, so, but the uh, that was uh, clearing up the whole thing as far as the apps. But um, the whole adapt or die thing, aside from that, seems like a really good marketing or a, like if I was trying to sell you guys on an oh, app, yeah. that sounds like something that I would say. You have to do this, otherwise you don't want to go out of business, do you? You don't want to be left behind, do you? You know, adapt or die. Well, here's an adapt or die for you. Um, you do realize that any of your front of house staff can tell you to go fuck off and be working and have the same amount of money later that week, right? If not more through ordering apps, through Uber, Lyft, Amazon Flex, DoorDash, Postmates. Uh, there's a <coughs> bunch of these gig jobs that have basically, I think, I don't know if you would feel the same way, but have sucked out the talent pool sure, when it comes no, to your front, of, your front of house and your back house staff. Also, some of your management. As a matter of fact, there's a gentleman I'm going to have try to get on at some point he's working at a breakfast place now so i don't know when we're going to do this but um he got to it got to the point that he would have uh instead of managing the restaurant he would have rather gone out and drive and drove for uber and lyft because he was enjoying that it was less stressful than what he was doing as being a gm sure but the whole thing is that was a gm a gm who basically said you know what this sucks I don't want to deal with this bullshit anymore. I can work my own lo- hours, live my own life. Mm-hmm. Make Probably about the same amount of money. Make about the same amount, yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure he enjoys the consistency well, back and, again. Well, and, you know, some of, the, some of the adapt and die thing, you know, the adapt in this business is definite. Mm-hmm. Uh, or die, if you're doing things right, you should never die. Yeah, whether you have an ordering app doesn't have anything to do with how good your recipe is or you how know, good your service is. If, or how if you're marketing and advertising... Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's like the famous phrase, oh, you have to spend money and make money. Um, yes, that's very true. You do have to spend money and make money um, in a lot of cases. But a lot of cases, you don't. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if you're an owner-operator, you know, like going to the local chamber of commerce, getting in with them, mm-hmm. that doesn't cost you a dime until they fees, whatever else, depends right. on your chamber. But going out and talking to your bigger accounts, if you do takeouts and to-goes, like your dealerships, your hotels, Mm -hmm. talking them into becoming a preferred vendor and stuff like that, it doesn't cost you nothing but your time. And if you're the owner, Mm -hmm. you've already spent that money and your time's already in it anyway, so you're not really spending anything to build it, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, But there are things, you know, uh, if you need a, a... a quick freeze cooler, you know, you got to spend it, um, Mm -hmm. getting on TV or having, uh, commercials or flyers or whatever the case may be, Mm -hmm. you know, but there's a lot in this business that you don't, and it just takes you talking to people. Yeah. Uh, whatever you're, you don't want to do, start there. So that's, uh, when it comes to like, uh, challenges and stuff, you know, I think so, so rather than say, hey, you know, you're all screwed, right? You know, you need to give up more money. That's not what I'm saying when it comes to trying to find talent. Because we all know that, uh, first of all, if you're working like a small, like a 100-seat uh, uh, restaurant, all right, there's no way in hell you could afford to pay your, your servers 18 to 20-some-odd bucks an hour. Or being able to the point where, because basically what it is is that they have to, it has to be worth more to come into your restaurant to work in your place than it is to do Uber and Lyft. And that that's going to be, I think that's the really, really big challenge here is the, uh, ask yourself the, que- uh, the question is why would I, right? Well, well, and there's, you know, there, there, what there, there is a guy, I'm not going to mention name restaurant or anything else, mm-hmm. but he was failing as a rest as, as his first restaurant, uh, first couple years, he was getting ready to mortgage his house. Mm-hmm. He decided to change everything. He put every everybody that worked for him, um, and I don't know the specifics on how he was able to do this. Maybe he got a loan, whatever else. Mm-hmm. But everybody that worked for him, he put him on a salary. Mm-hmm. Stop taking tips. Right. From the host to the busboy and throughout. Gave him benefits. Mm-hmm. Gave him paid vacation. Within the first year, turned a profit. 
mm-hmm. within the second year made enough to open another restaurant. Right. Um, that company's been expanding and growing, and and it's very different from what we know. So a lot of people are um, fighting the change, but it's a great change. I it, think so. It, I, I, I'm, and I'm not necessarily sold on tipping as the best way to go. Uh, oh, no, definitely not. Now, they'll still take them if people insist, and right. they split them up, whatever else. But it also gives... So after after he opened up, you know, more restaurants, the original staff that were with him, mm-hmm. he gave them ownership. Mm. Okay? So if the dishwasher's walking by and there's an issue, he could correct it. Now, what's odd about this is depending on the area you live in, you get, say, say you give them, you know, 32 a year. Okay. All right? As a dishwasher. It's not too shabby. You're going to be like, sweet. Right. You got a problem? I'll take care of that for you. Mm-hmm. No problem. Everybody in that house would take care of that house. Mm-hmm. Well, because they all have a stake in it. I remember when um, uh, I worked at Nico's Mediterranean Grill Bistro back in New York, which is no longer there. The restaurant, not the city. And uh, we we pool tips there, which that'll happen a lot of and a lot of diners and stuff. But uh, granted, he did, not that the money that paid for the whole staff all came out of the tips. It didn't. Like there was uh, floor cuts, which is that was the tip pool, and then there was a house cut, which is what uh, let's say if the tip pool was a hundred bucks that evening, then he would pay out of his own pocket a hundred bucks for a house cut. Okay. House cut was something like uh, your expo, which is, was usually a server, right? Uh, your host, whoever's on the phones, so that way nobody felt that they were getting shafted because they weren't making getting money. Uh, sure, right. And the, this is the interesting thing is for, when it comes to as far as teamwork goes uh, and training, we, everybody made it a point that whoever the new person was was trained well enough Probably. that they were actually that they were they were not going to be a weak link. They weren't going to cost they us contributed. money. And yeah, you absolutely because if they weren't going to contribute, if they were going to try to sneak tips on their own. We got rid of so many bad apples so fast that way. Oh, easy. Because we we cared about, uh, you know, well, we cared about our own pockets. I mean, that was a rough place to work for. But the idea is that, that the industry moving forward is going to have to try to find a way to give some type of sense of ownership to the employees, not in an airy-fairy like, hey, look, at this is what our company guideline thing is. Well, um, to give change. To, right. You know, change is definitely needed out there. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's part of taking care of your staff to have ownership in the business that right. you have. Um, you know, pay them well. They'll be loyal, whatever else. You know, sure, because they're just as mo- money hungry as, as you they are. They got bills the to owner. pay, too. They right. pay just like you. Yeah. Um, maybe they don't want to do it the rest of their lives. Maybe they do. But even as a chef, you know, do you aspire to have your own restaurant? What what happens when you get your own restaurant? Mm-hmm. Do you, Is that it? The dream's done? Mm-hmm. No. Hell no. I want to be like Emerald or whoever. You know, I want to have six different companies coming to me so and paying me to make a menu mm-hmm. you know so everybody has a uh spare uh i can't even talk now <laughs> goals aspiration um but not everybody's gonna jive with the same thing oh yeah you well know? i think it also depends what kind of business and how you want what kind of team you want but i always get to offer two two ideas to help attract talent and this is not worked out in detail at all. Um, time is really important. Like I always think if you can't offer more money, perhaps more time might be able to be a better substitute. Meaning, uh, so let's say, well, uh, the idea of working folks uh, split shifts or trying to get clopins. more than 40 hours, yeah, or clopins, um, Things like that are like constant doubles and stuff or three doubles in a row. Sure. Things like that. That's going to burn out your staff. It's better to give them more time. There are there are occasionally some employees that I found they're like, no, dude, give me as many doubles as possible. Like, they're out there. Yeah. And like, and I understand you need the money, but I don't want to burn you out because absolutely. Uh, I, I don't want to love working with you on a Thursday and then want to kill you by Sunday afternoon. Well, and like you know? I always say when I'm hiring people or even when people are working for me, if this is a part-time job and you have another full-time job or this is another full-time job, take one day. Mm-hmm. I, I preach it constantly. Take one day where you're off of both places. And 
yes, my reasoning for that is because I don't have somebody who's working for me that's going to cut a customer's head off for asking for a napkin. Right. You know, but the quality of life, and as I get older, I mean, I, I enjoy quality of life, um, especially with the hours I work, but mm-hmm. it's also for your employees, you know. And with the doubles, you're tired, you're worn out, whatever else. This is the you point of diminishing break, returns. Yeah. You know, so what kind of service are you given if you've been – doing three, four, five doubles in a row, you're mm. working 12, 14-hour days just on the floor, not to mentioning side work, and then you have to seem happy? Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, the idea of giving them, like, keeping them, like, more time. I don't know if it was, like, a, oh, yeah, uh, a vacation. Like, paid vacation. For servers, it's not an expensive for a paid vacation. Mm. I don't understand. But that was one of those things, I think, many years ago, the industry – Somebody was like, well, let's see, we're not paying that much anyways. Why don't we just not pay at all? Part-time, part-time is going to need to have benefits. That's the, the industry kind of fucked themselves when they're like, let's have well, everybody the work, the government and everybody. Well, okay, there was a couple things with like, the last company that I worked for when uh, something came down from the government. The way that they reacted to the new rules was akin to a drunk guy beating the shit out of his kid and saying, look at what you made me do. <laughs> that's not right. So that's kind of how some of the response sure. is like, well, let's see if we have to offer uh, uh, insurance, then we're only going to do it for, uh, you know, for full time. And we're only doing it this, by the way, the insurance is going to suck and it's going to be overpriced. So nobody has to uh, wants it. And uh, we yeah, did our best anyway. Right. Yeah, exactly. So there was that. But either way, now it's they're kind of boning themselves on this. Because now they cut all the benefits, the vacation time, any type of thing with the raises and stuff. And they want sure. to know how come they can't keep people. So there's that. The other one, and this is the real bizarre thing that was not going to make any sense. And I don't think any owner would want to do. Publicly traded companies, right? Restaurants. Yeah. Everybody wants to aspire to the point where they get so big where they can now offer shares. Make millions. Yeah, make millions and stuff. Maybe some of those shares should go, if you're going to be paying out dividends, make some of those shares go for your uh, for the people who actually helped you get there. So they oh, feel yeah. like they have a bit of ownership in the company. It doesn't have to be, I, you know what, I would think on some companies, even if they set aside 5%, which is still a lot, right? But it's... It's still five percent, but if you think it depends you, on the size of your company, right? But you know what? Some something that happened when when I started uh, very young in the in the restaurant industry, um, you know, that Christmas bonus. Oh, I remember. I had one of those once. I remember my owner coming up to me, and I was working for a Relay Chateau at the time, mm-hmm. and just throwing me five hundred bucks. Wow! Hey, man, have a good Christmas. Great job. Thanks for everything you do. I almost teared up one time watching another company. Like, it was a Pizzeria Uno's in Tempe. And they were doing a party for it was a construction company for the end of the year and stuff. And the boss had envelopes for everybody. And he was given an envelope in one hand and shaking the hand with the others. Just thank you for all the hard work you've been doing. Thank you for all the hard work. And I started to get weepy, man, because I was like... That guy gives a shit about the people that fucking work for him. My guy, no matter what, we made twenty grand for him on New Year's one day. He just he never even said thank you. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh, why am I doing this? So um I think that's something an idea. Like if you, you want people to to your your staff to, you know, take ownership in their job and stuff, um ownership would mean that you're making money. <laughs> like that there's something well, that you have out of it. So maybe try to not just talk about the ideals, but the actual practication. And, and, and there's still loyalties to be made like that. You oh, know, yeah. as you get into finer dining, you know, they still, most places, depending on corporate or private, they still do what's called uh, the shift meal, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah, so, that's not a whole lot. I mean, great, unless you get your selling steaks and but, stuff. I but. mean, if, if you got a million-dollar property, you know, you tell me you can't take – a percentage of that mm-hmm. and hook it up for shift meals every day. You can't flip out a burger for somebody. I mean, the, the, the loyalty that that would bring, mm-hmm. you know, as a manager, Hey, go cook something. Um, you know, I, I used to breakfast every, every morning when I opened, which was mm-hmm. only once a week, but right. everybody's like, cool. Now I would cook it. 
everybody else go on doing their thing and we'd have breakfast. Yeah. You know, go buy donuts, go buy pizza, go get get your staff something. Stupid little things. Mm -hmm. Like a handshake and, I mean, even a card for Christmas from an owner would be phenomenal. Oh, yeah. Doesn't have to be 500 50 bucks would be great. Hey, go get yourself something, anything. I remember the last day that I worked at uh, uh, at the airport, I bought uh, donuts, like two dozen donuts uh, for both restaurants, and then another one for my, uh, two for my food court. So it was like $50 worth of donuts or something right. like that, right? As I'm walking through security and I'm going through the look on every other place who didn't work for us. Oh, sure. They're just looking at us like, what? I, I, I want a donut. Like, it's just a donut. It's just bread and sugar. Like, it's, well, but the whole thing was the idea was like, you're getting donuts for your staff. Yeah, and I'm like, well, yeah. well, yeah, do you guys not, you know, but it, it's weird. Like, I felt I could hear, I could feel their, their sugary diabetic hearts breaking, you know, uh, and, and because they just wanted a little bit of acknowledgement. Yeah. But you have to do it on a day that isn't Mother's Day. Right. You got to sneak them up on it sometimes. Or like, you know, because, I mean, let's face it, as a manager, as an owner, operator, I'm only bringing food in on Mother's Day because we're so busy. Everybody's working open to close that I don't want you guys taking breaks. Yeah. Grab the sandwich, <laughs> grab the pizza, and keep knocking it out. That's exactly. You know what? I'm planning on next Mother's Day. I'm going to walk into a specific restaurant, see if they notice when I go back and start raiding their, You're raiding their own food. <laughs> I'm nice. just like, hey, I'm taking a bunch of granola bars and some candy. See you later. I am out. <laughs> you know? That is the only time that, that we do that. It's crazy. Really um, is. Yeah, that's 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 nuts. But but either way, we uh, we brought up some issues on this particular episode. Obviously, we don't have all the answers. Just a couple of ideas. Just like I'm sure whoever's watching this video, you might have some ideas, man. Feel free to share them. We have watchers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can hit me up at uh, Disjointed Films. I, I should have put the uh, the Twitter for Chef Dave A Z. That was the Mystery Diners one. But okay, I should probably set up. Um, like an email or whatever, like if folks have questions and stuff. Because we would love, like I said, that more topics help. and stuff, man. Uh, ideas that folks have about, you know, as far as like marketing, stuff that works, uh, that doesn't work. Uh, and hopefully we'll be getting some more, we'll actually be getting some chefs on the show pretty soon. I will promise that I should be getting a new camera by, uh, if not next week, but the week after. So we won't be as fuzzy. But uh, we appreciate that you're, if you've watched this far, thank you so much. I look good fuzzy. Yeah, there <laughs> It's, look, it's, yeah, this is, like it. Dead sexy. Yeah. Is there anything uh, you want to say before we uh, we head on out here, sir? No, I'm good. Oh, man, thank you once again. Anytime, anytime. Uh, Hope you guys chime in, able to uh, let us know what you think, see if we're full of shit, or if there's any merit to what we're saying. Yeah, if not, we will fucking find you, seriously. Like, <laughs> I got vac vacation time coming to me, and a car full of gas, so... Uh, but thanks, you guys, for checking it out. So signing off for Disjointed Food Biz, I'm Dave Germain. Thor Markey. You guys have a great week. <laughs>